Lesson 10, adding and subtracting fractions using the LCM. Here, we have 1 half plus 1 third, which is the same problem that we couldn't do earlier because they didn't have the same denominators, which just means they didn't have the same names. So let's use the LCM to change the names of these fractions properly so that we can add them. Letter A, circle the denominator and denominator. So in 1 half and 1 third, here's one denominator, and here is the other denominator. The 2 and the 3 represent halves and thirds. Letter B, find the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3, which are right here. Remember, use the magic question first, and if the magic question doesn't work, then use the shortcut. So let's try the magic question first. Larger number divided by the smaller number. Can you do 3 divided by 2 evenly? Answer is no, so the magic question doesn't work here. We have to use the shortcut instead. So here's the shortcut. Don't list multiples of 2 and multiples of 3. Only list multiples of the larger number. So let's count by 3. Here, we have 3 and stop. Now, can you do 3 divided by 2 evenly? Answer is no, so keep counting by 3. Next, we have 6 and stop. Can you do 6 divided by 2 evenly? The answer is yes, so circle and star. And 6 is our LCM. Here's letter C. Rewrite the problem by changing the names of the fractions being used. And since 6 is our LCM, we're going to rewrite this fraction 1 half plus 1 third. Instead of halves and thirds, we're going to use sixths, just like this. Go to the next line, write equals blank over 6 plus blank over 6. Now, how did you go from this to to the 6 using multiplication. And we did that by multiplying by 3, so write times 3. And whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do the same thing to the numerator. So write times 3 up on top. Next, how did you get from this 3 to the 6 using multiplication? And we multiplied by 2. So write multiply by 2. Same thing for the numerator. And now, Everything becomes just a series of simple multiplication problems. Here we go. What's 1 times 3? And that's 3, so write it down. Next, what's 2 times 3? And that gives us 6, so write it down. And, oh, the answer is already there. And this is how you can check to make sure that you're doing it correctly. There's an automatic check built in. Next, Let's do 1 times 2, and the, that gives us 2, so write it down. And finally, 3 times 2 gives us 6, so write it down, and oh, there it is right there. So we know we're doing it correctly. Now look at letter D. It says add, and refer to the apples plus apples lesson, which is lesson 7. So this now becomes a simple addition problem. Just like apples plus apples gave us apples, sixths plus sixths give us sixths. How many sixths? We have five sixths. And box your final answer of five sixths. As I've mentioned in the past, procedures like this will not stick unless you actually show students what it means. So let's use our fraction circles to help us. Here, we have our original problem of 1 half plus 1 third. And it didn't make sense to add these together in the past because halves and thirds are not the same thing. They didn't have the same name. And we used the LCM to change the names of the fractions properly, and we ended up with a final answer of 5 sixths. So here are my sixths, and I need a total of 5 of them. Here's 1 sixth. 2 sixths, 3 sixths, 4 sixths, and 5 sixths. And we're going to overlay these on top of our original problem. 
So here is one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, and five sixths. And just like magic, it's a perfect fit. Now we're going to break this fraction apart so that we can understand a little more deeply where these numbers are coming from. So we'll take 5 sixths, break it apart just like this, and here on the left side we have 1 sixth, 2 sixths, and 3 sixths. And where do you see 3 sixths in the work that we did? And it is right here. So I'll go ahead and circle that fraction. Now on the other side, we have 1 sixth and 2 sixths. And where do you see that in the work that we did? And it is right here. So I'll go ahead and circle that. The question now is, where did these two fractions come from? So let's find out. Take a look at 3 sixths, which is right here. And let's just take a little peek underneath, just like we're peeking at a present. So I'll split these apart, and you'll see that the fraction 1 half is underneath. So this 3 sixth here came from the fraction 1 half, which we had in our original problem. So this makes sense. We just took the fraction 1 half and renamed it as 3 sixths. Now for the other side. Where did this 2 sixths come from, which is right here. So let's take a little peek underneath, and here you'll notice we have the fraction 1 third. And where did that come from? So here's 2 sixths, and the 1 third came from the original fraction. So all we did was rena we renamed it as 2 sixths. So this part makes sense as well. Then we took 3 sixths, added them with 2 sixths, and came up with our final answer of 5 sixths. So this part makes sense as well. And that's how we use the LCM to rename fractions so that we can add them in a way that makes sense. It's just like taking apples and bananas, renaming them as fruit so that we can put them together in a way that makes sense. Here, we took the fraction 1 half and 1 third, renamed them as 3 sixths and 2 sixths, and that way we could put them together in a way that made sense.